Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with another video. We are doing a honing your airbrush skills video. Now before I get into the bits and pieces, I've just gotten back into the hobby after a three week, one month uh, rest. I was preparing and contributing to a very large LARP in Australia, probably the biggest one, and uh, crafted some stuff, had a lot of fun. All that aside, uh, in between the last time I've done one of these videos and I'm doing this one, uh, somebody has gone public on Facebook of uh, following the advices of this uh, video, uh, submerging their airbrush in thinner in an ultrasonic cleaner, then the airbrush no longer working. With uh, complaints, he was quite annoyed and other people jumped on him immediately and said that um, it is not an advisable uh, airbrush maintenance technique. Now, I just want to iron a few things out regarding that. First, uh, these uh, videos, my uh, series of honing your airbrush skills, the maintenance and cleaning side of things is uh, strictly a done towards the uh, DH-103 Sparmax or Mr. Hobby branded uh, airbrush. Secondly, these series of videos are experimental, uh, exploratory uh, videos of me um, and my diary of improving my airbrush skills and trying to tune and perfect my airbrush as good as possible. The airbrush is quite cheap. It's only a couple of hundred dollars. The components are very, very cheap and it uses rubber washers. Now, the majority of the rubber washers are not that important. Uh, they prevent a little bit of uh, air leaking, uh, paint leaking, and as I found, putting uh, the grease on the needle in certain points will cover where the uh, washers are wearing out. Eventually, with anything, the washers will need to be replaced. The washer at the end of uh, the paint chamber, on the, along the needle, where it goes into the air section, is fairly important, and as you've seen in the last few videos, uh, my washer has died and uh, paint slowly leaks at the back of the needle. Eventually things clog up and it stops leaking after a little bit of use, but I found with sufficient grease put in there, that process speeds up. Once it leaks one to two times after being cleaned, it's not too bad. And um, that's how what happens when you submerge your airbrush in thinner. Rubber washers will deteriorate. Airbrush kits can purchase another washer kit. I reckon after being submerged uh, once a month, it will uh, start uh, dying after a year. For very, very expensive airbrushes, this may not be a ideal cleaning technique, and if you do choose to do so, you probably don't want to clean it as uh, frequently as I do, but I do have a large output of models. Another bit of advice is if you do use an expensive airbrush for your fine detailing, and uh, what not, maybe a cheaper workhorse alternative can be for the bulk of your work and priming. Going back to my friend on Facebook who has the fault, the solenoid that uh, releases the air from the hose into his airbrush got jammed during the ultras ultrasonic cleaning. This has happened to me before as well. Uh, simply just uh, manually work the actual mechanism uh, manually with your finger, so push it in and out repetitively until it's uh, not loose and it becomes um, uh, workable again, very smooth. Uh, sometimes crap can get caught in the inside of the spring. Also, uh, cleaning it, or yeah, just, just work it. Um, push the uh, mechanism multiple times with your thumb. Uh, that will loosen any crap. It'll work as uh, normal. If it's really gunked up, just re-clean in the ultrasonic cleaner and just work it again with your thumb and finger. Lubricate it, put it in, and it should uh, start working. I found the component to be very cheap. I bought a second one, so when my first one uh, got stuck, I just put the other one in, airbrushed, and figured it out and worked it out at a later date. So maybe purchasing a second one is not a bad idea. Uh, have a look on eBay. If it's for a DH-103, you can buy it for about $3. Uh, all in all, uh, that covers this uh, little uh, rant. Um, again, these are experimental videos. Uh, if you just have a cheap uh, airbrush, go ahead. If it's more expensive and if you're used it for many years and you know how to tune it and you're very comfortable 
with it. Uh, maybe those elements of the video of submerging the whole airbrush is not for you. But other techniques such as putting um, cement down the nozzle or um, practicing drawing lines or some of the spraying techniques, that may be appropriate for you. This is just everything I do and you can actually uh, use the video and all of my content a bit like a buffet. You can take a little bit here, take a little bit there, ignore something else that you don't quite like. The more advanced of a modeler you are, that's at the stage you're responsible enough to say, that's for me, I want to do that. No, I don't like that. I may even voice and say, it's not for me, or these are my complaints. Uh, but uh, for other people, allow them to do it. Allow people to uh, experiment. It uh, sometimes comes out a bit harsh or a bit rude where you outright flat say that an idea, a concept is stupid or it is absolutely inappropriate. Uh, instead, just enter it a bit more diplomatically, uh, saying, don't like it, why? All in all, that's it. Let's get straight into the video. In my absence, since the last time I've done one of these uh, videos, the airbrush has gone through two kits. It's almost finished my um, SD wing repair, which people would have seen work in progress photos on my Facebook feed, as well as uh, the second Zaku for my Gunplay Builders World Cup entry. I think it's the MS-06J with the reactive armor. So it's got a fair amount of use, but it's still uh, spraying quite tightly with uh, no freckles, overspray, or misting in any areas. So I'm just going to keep going with minimal, minimal maintenance, no soaking, no ultrasonic cleaner. So the first bit of uh, maintenance I did, I removed the nozzle, the crown tip, and I pushed the rear end of my uh, needle all the way through. I found this uh, massive uh, clump of uh, lint, hair, and shit that you see at the end of my pinky. Now, it does seem very small, but to an airbrush needle that's 0.3 millimeters, it's uh, quite devastating and has caused a lot of cro uh, clogging, which resulted in the PSI being turned up. I also uh, rinsed uh, thinner a few times, backwashed and sprayed it out, wiped all the components down. Maintenance component over, straight into the painting. I'll be painting three components throughout this uh, quite lengthy video. Going to be quite generous and do a lot of content as this video has not been, or the series of this video has not been created in a little while. And since most of it's uh, maintenance orientated, now it's going to be painting orientated for this issue. The first piece I'll be painting is a rifle and it's going to be uh, metallic. The base colour being uh, buffable gunmetal by Model Masters uh, lacquer. Now, in each uh, section I'm going to be uh, painting and segments. I'm going to show uh, how I prepare the bottle, open it, stir it, tear the, um, pour the contents into the airbrush, uh, thin it or not thin it. This is uh, pretty thin, so this does not need thinning. I'll be using our clads as uh, well. And uh, general application, you can see at this point I'm uh, in front of my extractor booth, I've got my mask on, I'm being very uh, conscious of my health. Most paint vapours are dangerous to uh, breathe in, PSI set to 15 or less, and I'm ever so lightly just dusting on 10 centimetres away from the airbrush and slowly colouring it in by releasing as minimal paint as possible at a low PSI, sheerly dusting it on. It'll need to be turned around and sprayed multiple times until the uh, colour is quite solid. And as we can see in the uh, finished uh, model, we've just got a flat painted uh, metallic gun. Normally with a lot of people, just colouring in a piece is good enough. You'll panel line, you'll ink it, but I'm going to do a fair amount of shading, weathering. Give it some light, give it some jazz. Instead of just being a solid colour, we're going to think about where the shadows are hitting, where rust might or soot might develop, and where the light is hitting it. The first thing I'm going to do is the most ultralight colour, uh, alclad uh, polished aluminium, uh, pre-thinned, shake the bottle, pour in, and with just a very tight edge, uh, practicing a few lines, I'm just going to paint a ring around uh, a solid ring around the base pull back and uh, just dust a tiny bit to give the uh, higher end of uh, the barrel 
a lighter color than the bottom end of the uh, gun metal. Now we've got two tones and the gun, besides from the rest of the model, will be a lot more interesting to look at. Just a little hint, a little note about Alclad, very expensive, you don't want to waste a drop, apply straight into your airbrush. Extra clean, you do not want any contamination when you uh, pour back in the bottle. And also the plastic lid is absolute crap on the glass bottles, make sure you clean the rim of the thread thoroughly before you screw back. Over time it will crack, your uh, lid will damage, you've got nowhere else to store the uh, Alclad. This has happened once, so just be very vigilant with cleaning the cap of your Alclad paints. Now the finished result looks a tad silly, you just got a silver ring around a very dark barrel, but this is a place for the eyes to be drawn. Now we're going to focus on a bit of dust three hand weathering. And I've got an Alclad paint, or you could buy a Model Master uh, metallic. Uh, jet exhaust. Uh, this is a very uh, dark rust matte metallic color and it looks beautiful when you just edge pieces. Uh, same goes, shake up the bottle, apply straight into the cup of the airbrush using um, a skewer. Be careful of the uh, thread and when you'll notice when we are spraying it, just uh, ever so small lines like when we're practicing the lines, shading on in that little ends like the end of the barrel some of the ends where there's exposed parts or spinning parts which will uh, give uh, darkened uh, recesses or creases around the barrel gives it more of an interesting piece to look at again just absolutely one of my most favorite outclad metallic paints of all time can be used for dusting or weathering or shading any metal be it uh, your coppers, your silvers, or your very dark irons or gun metals. Definitely worth something to play with as it's uh, always a popular method within my style of painting in the past two years. Now we've got all the initial metallic painting done and it's time for some shading. And just using standard uh, Mr. Hobby Black, uh, this is just normal lacquer paint and going back to normal thinning ratios where we're not using pre-thinned metallizers and buffable paints. Uh, stir, shake the pot, pour it into a uh, separate uh, container. Don't put it directly in the airbrush because clogging may occur or cross-contamination. Uh, I, I do it to save time, but uh, once you get a bit more uh, confidence with an airbrush, um, you can give it a go. Uh, add your thinner, get the perfect consistency.H uh, quite milky, half-half, um, nice and watery. And the idea is you apply ever so slightly amounts of uh, PSI. You slowly rock back the trigger. If your airbrush is perfectly tuned, your nozzle and needle is okay, you're able to apply very fine translucent lines and just build up into a gradient end. Now, as always, you test the paint out of your airbrush on the surface, a piece of paper, a hard bit of plastic, the side of your booth, whatever, to make sure it's not splattering. The last thing you want to do is uh, splatter tiny balls of uh, paint all over your work. It's just absolutely uh, heartbreaking. So I've got a very nice semi-translucent uh, thin line uh, going on there. Uh, it's a little fat here, but I'm able to do it far thinner. When you um, practice drawing the lines, as uh, we do in the previous uh, videos, uh, this comes into uh, play now. I just want to blacken the tips and just sort of blend the um, burnt iron into uh, a black for shading. And I'm able to just trace around it, not cover or obliterate the entirety of the burnt iron. Just darken the tips of it, darken the tips of the uh, barrel. If you want to, just for light effects and sake, you can paint the underneath of the gun black. Just uh, ever so slightly shade until it's going to a gradient solid color into something a bit dark. And then in the center, draw a tiny uh, solid black line at the very, very bottom if you know the orientation of the barrel. Uh, this can be done after the model is completely assembled and almost near uh, top coating, which is acceptable. Another Alclad paint I absolutely love is the Hot Metal Senpai. It's a clear paint or a filter. It's a very uh, dark brown or mid-brown colour. It's very good for going over metals to show slight corrosion. 
All you have to do is ever so lightly dust it on because we've got that bit of uh, bright silver. It dulls that, dulls the rest of the metal. Uh, this is a heavily weathered battle damaged uh, kit that I'm painting. And we've got a, a quite a nice, um, interesting looking uh, gun that definitely catches the eye. We'll look at the kit later and the overall. Uh, the next bit we're going to is uh, painting a gigantic... Um, monitor or it's like a mono eye but it's a part of an SD Leo head and we want sort of a light effect coming out of it multiple gradients of uh, paints and colors uh, blending in with each other so we can see the selection of lacquer uh, colors we have in the small uh, styrene cutout or Mr. Hobby Art lacquers and again it's uh, the normal thinning ratios and mixing paints as we've learnt in the uh, earlier honing your airbrush skills videos. So a bit of a rundown what I do before I spray a piece and we're doing gradient spraying so we want to have uh, an ideal uh, perfectly clean ready to go airbrush no dirt uh, properly uh, flushed out previously. I shake the jar to move around the uh, pigments and give it a really good uh, mix with the uh, skewer making sure we've got an equal mix of uh, resin, paint, thinner and whatnot. It's not going to go all funny in the airbrush. Pour it in a small tin or separate container and roughly uh, two part paint to one part thinner or half half thinner and paint. Uh, mix it thoroughly, add to the um, airbrush, uh, avoiding cross contamination and uh, when the airbrush is full of air, uh, plug the end of the nozzle and, no nozzle and uh, use the bubble jet technique of uh, pulling back the uh, trigger, pushing down the air and internally mixing the paint and thinner throughout your airbrush. As always, we uh, test the paint on a solid object as if we're going to paint a model and we can actually paint the model. Low PSI, 11 to 15, and you're just creating an ever so a tiny blot, semi-translucent, not rocking the paint too much, not adding too much air, and we just see what sort of line we get. We outline the area we want the gradient to be, fill it in, pull the airbrush back, and just dust on to blend everything together. Now, the effect I'm trying to achieve is a blending of light colors. So we've got uh, red, the darkest, going into orange and yellow. And it just uh, looks pretty good when you see the three caps together in how the uh, colors blend. And when you gradient blend them with the airbrush, it should come out fairly amazing as long as everything's clean, running perfectly, and no mistakes occur as we are freehanding. The second color I'm using is uh, orange. I've uh, thoroughly... Uh, I'm cleaning out the airbrush and I'm preparing for a color swap which we will be uh, demonstrating about now. Lacquers are pretty safe with thinner as you can just uh, dry them out so I always add my paint uh, back in the jar. Uh, some Puritans do not do this and just uh, throw the uh, wasted uh, paint out. Once the uh, paint is uh, removed I do an initial swab of the uh, whole cup with um, a fresh piece of uh, toilet paper or tissue. And with a second uh, piece of tissue that is uh, dipped in lacquer thinner, the same corresponding thinner as the paint, and re-wipe to clean out the entirety of the cup. Now the bottom part of the uh, reservoir going uh, across the needle through the nozzle and outwards is uh, still dirty. Afterwards, crank up the PSI and just blast anything that's left in your airbrush out, including some uh, remnant thinner. Pull the needle out, ever so careful, do not damage the tip, wipe it with uh, thinner from the base near the tip, you don't actually have to wipe the tip itself. Then remove the uh, nozzle cap, the top bit that or crown that surrounds the cap. Uh, that will need to be opened and exposed and the little hole and surface are cleaned out so paint is not obstructing the needle when uh, paint is uh, being flushed out or airbrushed out. That's just as simple as wiping with some thinner soaked tissue. Once assembled, just like if we were mixing uh, paint and thinner together in the uh, cup, put your finger over the um, nozzle or the crown, uh, pull the uh, trigger back and mix um, a fresh batch of thinner with any remnant paint at the very bottom of the uh, reservoir. Spray all that thinner out into a uh, little um, airbrush uh, holder or spray pot. Once uh, that's completely empty, put some uh, fresh thinner in it and just flush out anything that's remaining. 
if you need to put thinner in a third time with a eyedropper and if it still has a slight color keep flushing until you only got solid thinner in there uh, this is the method I use for changing colors and just initially cleaning an airbrush from one color to another it is a tad time consuming but this guarantees to prevent any sort of uh, cross contamination and you'll have a clean paint job in between goes now applying the yellow is the same rules as applying the orange we're building up colors from the red layer orange layer yellow layer you should see the distinction of the three layers and we're just uh, painting an ever so slight line so we're using less paint less time more confident in doing small control uh, areas bit of a yellow uh, color in at the top pull back uh, shade out and we've got the nice three-tone colors cascading down and fairly happy with that uh, the more you practice the more you paint and shade things and using colors and lights the uh, better you will get over time and at this stage I just want to give it a little more interest a little more design shadowing and light to draw the eye to it so we're going to use black and white paints to give it a bit of an edge with the black paint and the uh, white paints we're going to color in the center as a focal point this is the head or the eye of the kit we're painting and it's massive as you uh, notice uh, throughout all the video clips and all the painting sessions are how these are cut and time consumed in uh, the preparing the cleaning up and whatnot it's a fairly accurate ish of how long it actually does take me to paint a piece uh, this session did stretch over for a good part of uh, half a day and uh, there's a few tools that I probably haven't mentioned the glass eyedropper I find is an amazing tool to measure out thinners lasts a very long time can be bought from uh, a chemist I'm not a big fan of those uh, plastic ones they warp and cross contaminate uh, over time and uh, in the end uh, just having a lot of fun with just control over PSI and how translucent the paint is it's practice and playing it is absolutely uh, cold as hell almost the middle of winter in Australia and I'm developing a bit of a creak in my throat uh, probably leading to a sore throat do not want to get uh, a cold or an infection and something they've been doing um, in Germany for many hundreds of years uh, cough medicine or uh, Jägermeister it's um, quite a potent uh, spirit alcohol I cannot find a shot glass in the house which is very bizarre due to my behave, um, habits Then this lovely uh, oyster shell so uh, Cheers to good health. Oh yeah, good stuff. In the end, with the uh, camera, camera mono eye piece for the uh, SD Leo head, I'm very happy how that turned out. That was just how I visualized and wanted to paint something as I went along and uh, designed it just on the fly, just to see what it looks like and um, I just mostly wanted to focus on making a focal point now the next thing I'll be painting for the remainder of this video is a diorama piece that I 3d printed it's going to be generally grey just uh, ruined uh, buildings um, nothing that I want to steal the show from the model itself it's just a base so it's going to be very plain nothing eye grabbing very drab but at the same time I want to play with the effect of uh, light uh, where the top of the light is, where it's going to shadow throughout um, these uh, sticking out bits of debris, rubbish and whatnot. So far everything's been uh, primed. Uh, it's a very sandy, bumpy textured base. I uh, added a layer of Mr. Surface of 1500 uh, black throughout every nook and cranny since there's a lot of uh, hidden detail and whatnot. The model had to be sprayed multiple times to make sure there wasn't a small pocket or debris or something that hasn't had paint throughout it because if there's a bit of a white spot or a natural color spot from the original model will be spoilt if it was uh, seen from an angle that one would not normally look at or the paint would get uh, captured so it's all black and the first thing I do is use a very dark color German gray and I'm generally uh, coloring all the flat surfaces solidly in that color and dusting it on from behind and every uh, which way direction it's very dark and it's hard to be noticed from the black paint 
Now, we have four tones of uh, grey going to a near off-white. Uh, the next one is um, a fairly noticeable grey. We're being a bit more focused. We're picking up the model and we're actually colouring in the entirety of the front face that's definitely facing out that we want the um, eye to definitely capture and dusting just in between the frames of the window on the side. Uh, also, the follow-through debris in between the windows um, at the very bottom. We're not really applying any paint on the underneath side or too much on the extreme sides because we want the German grey and the black to uh, pop out. You notice as we go lighter and lighter, the paint is uh, concentrated more in the centre of the uh, solid blocks or surfaces not so much being applied at all on the sides or the rear, just ever so lightly uh, dusted from afar. And the final colours are only applied at the uh, bottom of the surfaces, so you still got the medium greys coming out in the middle and then it just slowly going to where the light's just reflecting or it's at its absolute lightest or where the majority of the light source is uh, hitting that point. And then as you're going around detail and blocks and whatnot, it just gets darker and darker. Just naturally painting, dusting on, weathering on um, shadows just to give uh, little bits of uh, detail that are there or otherwise not there. Definition without dry brushing, without inking, without anything uh, like that. Just for uh, maximum interest, maximum uh, definition. All it is is just playing with um, a tight controlled point that we're practicing in our lines and the rest is just pulling back and uh, dusting. Following general maintenance and tuning tips uh, with your airbrush and being very confident in its control, uh, this is all very easy to do. It just takes uh, trial and error and actually giving it a go. Now, of course, this is the finished result and I'm very happy how this has uh, come out. It definitely looks uh, quite dramatic. Now, also don't forget, just because you're done with uh, airbrushing doesn't mean more colours could potentially be added. You could uh, dust on some um, little bit of uh, browns or greys or whatever in other areas to have uh, multi-tones. Uh, just because we're 100% done with um, airbrushing doesn't mean we can hit it with a paintbrush and do some dry brushing, some inking, some weathering, uh, dry brushing edges, whatever. But at this stage, all I'm going to do is some ever so light uh, dry brushing and mostly uh, a sludge washer black to uh, capture all of the uh, little um, pebbles and rocks and the sand texture and all the uh, grooves in the uh, building ledges and um, window frames to uh, give it uh, definitely a slightly darker look and all the detail is uh, present from afar. The uh, pole sticking out which will support the model was also uh, gradient airbrushing which was uh, described with the Leo giant squarish mono eye, you know, the red, orange, yellow work. Uh, this is an example with black, white, and gray. So, after I've done all my painting, my half assed uh, maintenance, my talking, my diorama, everything, as always, every time I do a honing your airbrush uh, video, I feel it is important to uh, practice uh, drawing lines. We're still going back to my original goal of trying to get lines as neat and thin as a HP uh, pencil line. At uh, first I thought it was completely impossible and these were just half assed and uh, they're getting skinnier, skinnier and straighter. Uh, and at first um, that was slightly splattery and uh, even though they are still kind of splattery until the end, um, I'm using a shit mix of paint, it gets fairly neat and I um, did a couple of passes on the tank so we can't just say you know the paper's porous, um, the lines are thin, the lines are also pretty thin on uh, the tank here too so the practice is definitely uh, paying off. I still do just an A4 sheet of uh, a few lines and even though they're not straight at all, I'm absolutely rubbish at making them straight. Uh, they're probably straighter than I did it about a year or so ago. I'm going to just keep working at it. One A4 sheet, once a month, every time I do this video. And uh, you can see I need to do some maintenance on the airbrush. The needle is uh, either slightly off or the uh, nozzles um, ever so slightly loose to get these uh, little comet tails but 
you know, it's neither here nor there. Um, I'm not, you know, doing tattooing or anything. But it is a cheap airbrush with issues. So all in all, bit of practice, juice and neat lines, pretty happy, going to keep at it. Now, it's not all fun in paradise, even though we've uh, covered the uh, painting elements. I'm having trouble with my uh, compressor. I've had this Delta compressor for about four or five years. I think this uh, compressor is aging. It's starting to break down. I found it to be quite an amazing tool. It's very easy to control the uh, airflow. The tank's great. The water trap is great. I get very little problems out of it, but now when the tank completely fills up, besides the odd leak that's happening here and there that I have to fix with uh, Teflon tape, the um, when it's supposed to cut out from the uh, pressure switch or the micro switch, the um, actual motor itself starts to splutter and jump and it's not constantly running. You can hear uh, skips in it or it uh, runs a bit then stops and starts and stops intermittently. So I think it's getting a bit old and it might be at a stage where it might be uh, breaking down. I'm going to see how long I could stretch the uh, life out of it. Um, you're going to hear some uh, audio files of it uh, malfunctioning. And what I do when I hear it uh, starting to clip and skip is I turn it off, drain some air, turn it back on, and it's uh, absolutely fine. I also find the main body or the piston head part where the heat sinks are is really overheating bad. Uh, I don't know if it's actually from my unusual use. I do uh, go on stints of airbrushing for many, many hours leaving it on. There's been a couple of times I've left it on overnight by uh, mistake. I probably have not taken the uh, best of care of it and definitely pump out um, more than the usual amount of uh, models as a modeler. So as a casual modeler, this is probably the equivalent of uh, 10 years out of use. But uh, if I do get a different uh, compressor and if this does break down, expect um, a new model and maybe a new compressor review. Now, here's probably uh, a bit of my labor, some of the stuff that I've uh, painted up for the Leo uh, Wing project. A gun, a bell thruster, I've uh, covered a video a while ago how to uh, paint and realistically weather and do up uh, bell thrusters to be very interesting. This is just another example, though this one was quite mess massive, so I could play with uh, more colors. So you got the silver going into uh, bronze. Uh, the gun I am insanely happy with. I think it's one of the most interesting guns I've painted in a long time. This uh, kit has more guns and rifles, and I've uh, sort of done very similar style of uh, shading, weathering, and the band of uh, silver in multiple places, which you will see from the kit review in a couple of weeks' time. And the um, eye, where it sort of blends from yellow to red with the center white and the black outline, uh, I just cannot be more happy with that. I think this was a very successful session. In the end, with the extra practice and time that I've been spending tuning, maintaining, getting to know my airbrush, spraying those lines, I can't be happier than uh, where my airbrushing is uh, definitely at. Um, it was just a lot of fun to do these pieces, just sit back and casually just do very small gradient lines and shading and whatnot. It all goes down to getting close, coloring something in, pulling back and just dusting on with uh, all the tips that I've been uh, passing on from all the previous videos and demonstrating them in uh, this uh, very video. The little 3D printed terrain piece also came out really nicely. I like the uh, shadowing and the edges and uh, the light flares and whatnot. Uh, a bit dramatized or dramatic for, let's say, something if it was meant to be a realistic military project. So this is very uh, sci-fi flashy, but... Um, Good fun. I'm more than happy at what I've definitely got out of it. Not too hard at all. I reckon everyone who's playing at home can have a go at doing this sort of stuff and just having fun with what you do and 
realistically, I just looked at the piece and thought it would be cool to paint it in that way and where my painting style is right now. I just went for it and um, produced something that just seems to be sort of interesting. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, this was an insanely long video, but hopefully we'll get back to uh, habits and regular programming with uh, honing your airbrush skills uh, series of videos. We will be looking, documenting and covering maintenance as we always do, especially new tricks and uh, what condition the airbrush is going after going through that regime over a long period of uh, time and problems. But we're going to be mostly focusing on uh, painting and painting techniques on current projects that I'm working on. If anyone has any suggestions, want to see something, always leave a comment in the comment section. I am very active in uh, checking those. If you have any questions, they're always um, actively uh, answered. And don't forget to have a look at Facebook where our work is also being constantly uh, put up there as well on the Makana Man. Again, thank you very much guys and peace out.